In this lecture, we explain different modeling representations of a dynamical system. A model is a mathematical representation of a system which allows us to understand and predict the behavior of the system. For example, we can predict the output of a system for different inputs and initial conditions. There are several techniques to theoretically or experimentally determine the model of a system which we are not going to cover in this video. We however assume the model of a dynamical system is known and want to learn about possible ways of representing the model and the advantages and disadvantages of each of these representations. We list three of the most common representations which are transfer functions, ordinary differential equations or ODEs, and state space representations. Transfer functions are in frequency domain, but ODEs and state space representations are in time domain. Let's start with a linear dynamical system and see how the dynamical model can be represented using each of these three models. Consider a mass spring damper system with mass m, spring constant k, and damping constant d. This is a free body diagram that shows the forces applied to the mass in the x direction, where x is the displacement of the mass with x equals zero corresponding to the position of the mass when the spring is unstretched. x dot equals v is the velocity of the mass and f is the input force. We use Newton's second law to find the dynamical model of the system. The sum of all forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the mass. So the dynamical model of the system can be written as a second order differential equation in this form, where f equals u is the input to the system. So the first way to represent the dynamical model of a system is by using differential equation. In this example, the dynamical model is shown using a second order differential equation. We now want to represent the dynamical model of the system in the frequency domain. We assume the output of the system is the displacement x. By taking the Laplace transform from both sides of the ODE equation, assuming all initial conditions are zero, we can obtain the transfer function, which is the ratio of the output to the input and is equal to one over m s squared plus b s plus k. We learned in the linear control systems course that the stability of this system can be determined by the location of the poles of the transfer function. We finally represent the dynamical model using the third method, which is the state space modeling. The idea behind state space modeling is very simple. We just need to write the nth order ODE model of the system as n first order ODEs. This will help us represent any dynamical system in a unified way. We will explain more about state space modeling after this example. So if we define v as v equals x dot, we can rewrite the second order ODE model of this system as two first order equations, which are v equals x dot and v dot, which is actually x double dot equals to minus b over m times x dot minus k over m times x plus one over m times u. We define a two by one vector psi, which is called a state vector and we write the two equations as a single equation in the form of psi dot equals a psi plus b u. This equation is called the state equation. We can write another equation, which is called the output equation, as y equals c psi, where c is a row vector of 1 and 0. Let's now summarize different representations we obtained for the mass spring damper example and compare them with each other. Transfer functions are frequency domain representations which can only be used for linear time invariant systems. So we cannot use them when the system model is, for example, nonlinear. Also, they can only relate one input to one output. This means that if a system has two inputs and one output, we need two transfer functions from the output to each of the two inputs. Then to calculate the output of the system to both inputs, we need to use the superposition principle. The advantage of transfer functions is that they make the stability analysis very simple. As mentioned earlier, we only need to check the poles of the transfer function to check the stability of the system. 
The second representation method is the differential equations. ODEs allow us to intuitively translate physical and mechanical concepts into a mathematical framework. They can model all types of systems, including linear, nonlinear, time varying, and time invariant systems. They can also be used to model single input, single outputs, and multi input, multi output systems. Status space modeling is also a time domain method, but unlike ODEs, it provides a unified method where the system model is an n dimensional first order system with two main equations the state equation and the output equation. For nonlinear systems, the state of space model is in this general form, where x is the state vector, y is the output vector, and u is the vector of inputs. The first equation, x dot equals f of t and x and u, is called the state equation, where x dot is the time derivative of x. The second equation, y equals g of t and x and u, is called the output equation. For linear time invariant systems, the state equation is x dot equals ax plus bu, and the output equation is y equals cx plus du, where the matrices a, b, c, and d are constant matrices. If the system is linear and time varying, then the matrices a, b, c, and d are generally time dependent. For mechanical systems, state variables are usually chosen as positions or angles and their time derivatives, which are linear and angular velocity and acceleration. For example, for the mass spring damper system, we chose the state variables as x and v, which are the displacement and the velocity of the mass. The minimum number of state variables for a dynamical system is equal to the order of the ordinary differential equation describing the system. In the mass spring damper example, the order of the ODE is 2, and therefore we chose two state variables. Finally, state variables should be linearly independent, otherwise we may not be able to write the state equations. Examples of acceptable state vectors are psi equals 3x and 5v, and psi equals x plus v and x minus v. But the state variables x plus v and 2x plus 2v are unacceptable. So state variables are not unique. A system can be modeled by infinite sets of state variables. It's usually the case that a specific set of state variables is chosen because it's physically meaningful, but sometimes because it yields mathematically nice state equations. For example, a diagonal or a triangular state matrix A.